Matthew Robert Payne. This is uh, my book called He's Redeeming Love. And this is chapter 10 uh, called Taxi Driving. Our Domino's Pizza store that I worked as as a trainee manager closed. I, I think it was uh, because that our store wasn't profitable for the Domino's chain. Um, around then the Domino's chain changed hands too and I think they closed some stores. And so I was out of a job. Uh, that's what I think happened. Um, I saw a job in the paper for uh, taxi drivers and uh, went and inquired about the job and was told when the next taxi driving training course was going to be on. I went and studied uh, uh, and did the training course for a week with the taxi company. Uh, then we had to study for a written test and I studied with the written test at the taxi uh, company. They um, told us uh, the answers to the four tests. That there was four different tests that uh, the government used to use to test taxi drivers and they showed us all the questions and all the answers and so they said uh, when you see an answer uh, in the taxi driving test that's probably an, an answer when you see an answer that uh, seems to be familiar to you uh, that's probably the answer because you've already seen it so I went and passed the test and we had to go for a driving test and uh, I went on the driving test uh, to take an instructor on, on the test and um, I was fortunate that I got the uh, instructor talking about her daughter and her daughter's wedding plans and she was uh, distracted. Uh, I don't think she was watching the road and uh, watching what I was doing as much because she was uh, too busy uh, talking about um, her daughter's weddings and her daughter's wedding plans and so I was happy that uh, at the end of it uh, she passed me and said that I was okay to get a taxi driver's license so I had a police checkup and at that time I had a good police record and so uh, I was issued with my first taxi license I started uh, driving for the company uh, and using the company cars. The company had a, a, over a hundred cars that they kept in a taxi base and I started uh, driving uh, with them uh, which is the first place that, that most taxi drivers start with that didn't have experience. They didn't mind taking people on that didn't have experience. Uh, the cars weren't the best quality uh, of cars. So they weren't in a fantastic uh, condition uh, I found that uh, they only had uh, one workshop with, with mechanics in it and I don't think they uh, serviced the cars regularly. I think that they just waited until a car had a problem before they did any work on the car. And so um, in years to come when I drove taxis, um, it was only when I was in absolute desperate stakes that I'd go and drive for the company driving for a private owner of a taxi was a lot more enjoyable and the cars were a lot better maintained. On my first ship, shift, uh, I did not uh, make a lot of money. Uh, I parked on a taxi rank uh, close to my house and um, from four o'clock to six o'clock uh, there was jobs uh, on the taxi rank uh, and well, from four o'clock in the morning I went into the city and uh, did some work up until about six o'clock and everyone had gone home from the clubs. When I got uh, to the taxi rank at six o'clock, uh, that taxi rank used to be called on the, on the radio, but uh, when I uh, was there, um, it wasn't seemed to be getting called and uh, I didn't know why it wasn't getting called and cars, taxis were pulling up behind me and uh, staying there for a while and then leaving and I thought they were leaving because they got sick of waiting. Uh, I wasn't aware that I was on the wrong uh, radio channel uh, to hear the job and jobs were getting called but I wasn't hearing the jobs because I was on the wrong channel on the radio. Uh, eventually uh, I um, went and inquired in the car behind me uh, what was going on, why were cars leaving and
he told me that uh, what channel I needed to be in on the radio and so I went back to my car and changed the channel and I found that uh, within 20 minutes I had a job I was off earning money the operators who called the jobs on the radio were very knowledgeable about the city uh, they seemed to know where every street was in the city uh, and it was a big city um, Brisbane uh, is about 80 kilometers by 80 kilometers or about 60 miles by 60 miles north to south south to west and uh, the operators uh, were had tremendous ability to uh, call jobs and uh, know where where the streets were that they were uh, dispatching the cabs to there were uh, a number of calls but the three most common calls uh, that the radio dispatchers made were, were these there was a call uh, that uh, they called for a car that was sitting on a ramp and if you were uh, if you were not busy it was a good experience to drive to a taxi rank and wait at the taxi rank uh, you could uh, in busy times just drive around the city and people would hail your taxi but most people in uh, Brisbane were trained to go to ranks and wait on ranks so um, <clears throat> the first call from the taxi operator was uh, for a certain suburbs rank and if you were the car on that rank and you were the first car on that rank uh, you'd come in for the job and uh, he'd dispatch the job to you then there was uh, secondly if there was no car on the rank uh, the operator would call for the suburbs block and uh, if you're within the limits of that suburb uh, you would call in and make a bid on the job and the taxi operator would uh, decide which of the cars that have come in uh, on the block call were closer to the job sometimes it was only one or two cars that were actually vacant in the suburbs block that weren't sitting on a rack and um, um, the closest car according to the operator would uh, get the job the third call was an open call and that meant that there were no taxis in the current block of that suburb but they may be in adjoining suburbs and uh, so the taxi operator used to put a call out to the open uh, call and um, the nearest taxi ascertained by the operator according to the bids that came in uh, used to get the job then once the operator had found the car he was going to give the job to he'd uh, read out a pickup address uh, for the car to pick the job up at or any special instructions like ring the bell and ask for Mike or whatever um, and um, you'd need to understand the address uh, that the job was getting dispatched to uh, you had to understand the address uh, and to write it down so it's just as hard as uh, understanding what I'm saying and writing down what I'm saying in video uh, so um, when you understood the address you'd write it down if you had a query with the address you had to ask the operator twice uh, to repeat the address uh, and sometimes you needed to ask him to spell the name of a street if it wasn't a common street or a street that you couldn't smell, uh, spell. During the day uh, things were mostly honest and uh, taxi drivers didn't seem to steal your jobs but at night time if you showed any hesitation in receiving the job or there was any uh, indication in your voice that you didn't understand where the job was um, a lot of times uh, your job had disappeared by the time you got to the place another taxi uh, has cruised past your job and taken the job uh, a lot of taxis uh, were uh, not vacant and so they couldn't bid for a job when a job came up but they may be uh, just about to drop off someone in, in a street close to where your job was to be picked up so on many occasions there, there was a taxi closer than you and could get to the job faster than you but wasn't able to bid on the job and um, so those taxis um, 
used to uh, steal your job. Uh, sometimes it was an innocent thing, sometimes someone just hailed a taxi and uh, the taxi uh, picking them up had no idea that the person had rang for a cab uh, and I've just picked up your job. But um, m many times I feel that there was intent behind it and uh, they were just uh, cat taxi drivers out to earn a dollar and didn't mind if uh, their next job was your job. Um, I love the driving the taxis. It was an enjoyable job and I, as I grew uh, in the experience of driving taxis, uh, my money started to go up. It was long hours uh, um, from 4am to 4pm or from 4pm to 4am and so the hours were quite taxing. I remember um, that as a child I missed my father because my father was away for 12 hours a day and it seems that the same thing had started to repeat itself um, in my life when it came to my son. I loved uh, meeting new people and having conversations with them. I found people were very honest when it came to taxi drivers. They were very honest with what they had to say. Many people um, really opened up uh, to me. Uh, I think it was twofold. I think uh, because I was personable and uh, friendly, uh, I think they felt comfortable to open up and share some things about their life and share intimate things about their life. Um, but I think also sometimes uh, people use the opportunity of a taxi driver just to uh, dump uh, stuff on them. Um, Sometimes people are feeling in a bad way, they've had a breakup with a relationship or something and uh, something's uh, made them upset and they need someone to talk about and uh, as a taxi driver uh, you were a helpful person to dump things on. Uh, so that happened quite a lot where people would share some uh, not very nice information with you and uh, that was part of your job as a taxi driver. I, I grew to love people and I grew in my ability uh, to draw people out of themselves. Um, I didn't uh, often pick up the same person and so um, people felt uh, more willing to share with a stranger uh, some things that are happening in their life than they are willing to share with their friends. So um, because they were comfortable in my taxi I found a lot of people open up. They're all uh, types of passengers that a taxi driver picks up. Um, they range from a businessman uh, fresh with bags going to the airport or uh, a businessman with a briefcase uh, going to work. There were um, people uh, that were smelling really nice um, straight from the shower in the morning and uh, with deodorant and with perfume on and uh, they were always enjoyable to pick up. It sort of put a good smell in the cab. And uh, there are also people coming home from work that were tired and you could tell they were tired. And there are also um, people that uh, came uh, smelling of cigarette and smelling of alcohol that uh, came straight from a nightclub in town. I learned how to drive day shifts and uh, I also learned how to drive uh, taxi and night shift. I have to say, uh, to be able to drive a taxi in the night shift takes a certain personality in a taxi driver. Uh, a lot of people um, who catch a taxi at night have got bad behaviour and they uh, don't treat the taxi with uh, taxi driver with too much respect. Uh, uh, so some of these uh, people with drunken behaviour um, are the sort of guys that uh, want to uh, pick a fight with anyone they can and uh, a good person to annoy um, was uh, their taxi driver on the way home. Uh, I found um, as I grew in my self-confidence and in my self-esteem I found that um, I was less able to pick up um, people at night uh, because uh, their behaviours used to annoy me. You had to um, have a personality that 
just allowed insults to go past your ears and uh, not react to them and uh, just be quiet and let a person insult you and uh, not uh, do anything about it. There are a few uh, memorable trips that I had as I drove taxis for years and uh, a few of them include these. Uh, one time uh, I had a couple of girls uh, get in a taxi uh, from a nightclub. Uh, they said that they'd passed all the other taxis in front of me and uh, had decided to jump all the taxis and catch my cab. <clears throat> On the way home, the um, two girls were uh, chatting amicably and uh, they seemed pretty happy to be talking to each other. Uh, then we dropped uh, one of the girls uh, to her house and we continued on to the other girl's house. Um, as uh, we continued on, uh, the Lord uh, influenced me and gave me a thought. And uh, so I spoke to the girl. I said, uh, on the way home there with your friend, uh, you were all happy and excited. And uh, that was uh, a, a total sham. Um, in fact, you're going home right now to uh, take a whole lot of sleeping tablets and commit suicide. And uh, the girl was, uh, had her mouth open in shock and asked how, how did I know such a thing. And I was able to tell her that uh, Jesus had told me that uh, she was um, going home to kill herself. And I asked her what was going on and why was she um, in such a condition. And she said, that her boyfriend had broken up with her and didn't even want to be a friend anymore and didn't want to talk to her and uh, it broke her heart and she thought that life wasn't worth living. Um, I spent an hour outside the house with the meter off. Uh, I turned the meter off and got paid uh, for a trip but um, stayed there for an hour until I was sure that she was uh, okay to go inside and she wasn't going to go ahead with a suicide. Um, so many times uh, in the taxi um, I had an influence on people uh, and there were divine appointments. One time I had uh, a lawyer uh, jump in the car and uh, we were on the way out to where he wanted to go and I asked him what he was doing and uh, what was his business for today and he said that uh, he was going out to resolve a dispute between uh, two, uh, two heirs of a manufacturing business and uh, there was two families, two, two men that started the manufacturing business and one of the men had one son and one of the men had two sons and now the sons were operating the business and uh, the company or the um, family with the two sons were taking the family with the one son to court saying that they should get two thirds of the money uh, of the business because there's two of them and uh, there's only one son in the other um, business. And I was able to say that um, the best uh, start that you could start with the dispute is uh, not so much a focus on splitting the company two thirds, one third, but uh, to look at the current profits of the uh, company and say that um, with today's current profits it should be split 50-50 but for many profits that increase um, from today on perhaps could be shared two thirds, one third. And um, the uh, lawyer was uh, gobsmacked with uh, my answer and uh, he said uh, I was a wasted uh, person driving a taxi that I had a lot more potential uh, in life than uh, to be driving a taxi and uh, he was uh, very um, happy that I'd given him an idea um, that uh, he could take to the clients and he said he'd be taking the idea to the clients because it made a lot of sense and uh, it was I was doing his job for him. I remember another time uh, at uh, about one o'clock in the morning I picked up who was a senior partner of a law firm in the city. And I was talking to him and asking him how things were going and he got quite sad and said that um, his law firm is in a lot of uh, problems financially. 
and I asked him why was that and he said um, just the cash flow was no good and um, the fact that a lot of lawyers uh, in the firm weren't asking for prepayments and partial payments on law cases. They just uh, believed that the firm had deep pockets and uh, could handle any financial situation. And um, he said that uh, we told uh, they'd told the lawyers to take partial payments, but they haven't gone ahead and do, done it. And now the company is struggling financially. I told him that. Uh, they should hire um, a company that comes and does time and motion studies and uh, a company that, uh, that uh, comes and studies a company and uh, makes recommendations and hires and fires people and uh, makes changes to the internal structure of a company. And uh, I said uh, you can pay them a couple of thousand dollars an hour um, to uh, do this study and then you can tell them as one of the recommendations uh, that um, every lawyer uh, working a case has to take partial payments and it's not a suggestion now, it's something that has to be done or you'll lose your job. And I said um, the problem with him was that he was friendly and uh, probably some of the other partners were friendly and people were taking advantage of, of their good personalities and their friendliness and uh, they weren't taking them seriously and yet if you uh, hire one of these firms and it's uh, circulated that people are going to lose jobs or possibly lose jobs, people are going to pay attention and then you can have this uh, firm uh, make the recommendations that you want made and people will pay attention because they think their job's on the line. And at the end of it, um, the lawyer was in tears and thanking me profusely uh, for my advice. I believe now um, that um, I look back at this, I think those three situations involved um, the gift of the prophetic. I believe that um, God was working through me with uh, words uh, directly from heaven and advice directly from heaven um, with those three situations and in many situations in the taxi uh, God was intervening and uh, giving me messages to give to people. As you can see, um, uh, from my stories, uh, my job was a little bit more than just picking a person up and taking them from one place to another. Um, so that's just a little insight into a job that was uh, one of my favourite jobs, um, driving a taxi.